Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Take a Pew. I'm Alex Course. And I'm Gavin Knox, and today we're at the Central Liverpool Food Bank, finding out what it's all about. I'm Gavin, uh, what's your name, sorry? I'm Darren. Darren, please meet you. Darren, I'm Alex. Nice to meet you, Darren. So how long have you been um, working or volunteering here, sorry? Well, I'm, I'm actually an employee of the food bank. Oh, right, oh, OK, I OK. I was volunteer last year. All oh, right. Uh, six or eight months. Then I went on the part-time payroll sort yeah. of thing of the food bank. Because I'm a stock coordinator, I ah, okay. make, make sure the food comes in, yeah. it's all in date, so it's not date, check it, weigh it. Make sure it's all good to go. Good, good to go in the shelves, yeah. then bring it back out and dish it to customers. Yeah. So what uh, made you sort of uh, volunteer? And... I like being occupied, something to do, yeah. Yeah. and I come to this church, and it's not food bank side, food bank's the ideal thing, and it's helping the community, but yeah. giving back to the community. I mean, we could all be in this position one day. We well, that's a, it, isn't it? Yeah. Need a, need a handout sort of thing. So eventually, we need to help other people. Yeah. People who who need the food. Yeah. Who come in here thinking, I need food, but I'm, I'm hungry. I can't afford to pay it, to buy food or put food on my children's plate sort of thing. Yeah. It's just it's so hard to see them wanting and don't really want to do it, but yeah. know they've got to do it just to survive. Just survive. Yeah. 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 Do you often see the same pe- kind of people coming back? We got a, a checklist with people. Yeah. We get some people yeah. come back now and again. Got people back coming back. We get some people who come back regular basis because they're, because they're, because the benefits have been stopped or yeah. haven't come through yet. So I mean, it's a shame yeah. not seeing their benefits. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, how many how many families do you get coming through I mean, on average? I think on average we get I say about something about twenty five a week, yeah. maybe, maybe a bit more. We're now joined by Stephen Robinson, and we talk about some of the other uh, things that the food bank does to help people. So, Stephen, um, can you sort of run us through? Uh, obviously, food is obviously one of the things. But I mean, what what else does it do in terms of helping people uh, in need? Yeah, sure. So, we often see a lot of people coming in with uh, various um, problems, various issues that they yeah. need to sort out. And um, like you said, food is one of the main things that we like to uh, that we can help them with, yeah. providing them with three days worth of food. But sometimes we get people who are coming in who are struggling with debt, and okay. um, people who are um, we've had people come in who recently lost members of the family and they can't yes. afford afford to pay funeral bills, and mm. people can't afford to even buy uniforms for the children for the new school year. Sixty percent, wasn't it, of uh, people coming in here? Obviously, you've uh, often had I've had some sort of type of problem with benefits, yeah. so it's obviously another area that you yeah. help people a lot with, mm-hmm. like trying to get their benefits back, trying yeah. to be because obviously if you are sanctioned, it does yeah. it can be quite difficult. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, obviously. I mean, we've had people come in who have been sanctioned for six months, um, and actually, I'm dealing with a, a client at the moment yeah. who hasn't had any benefits for nearly a year, um, yes. so. Obviously, um, it's difficult, isn't it? Well, going into it, much is, too no, much is kind of yeah, like yeah. how do we how do we provide for someone for a year who can't, who doesn't yeah. get any benefits at all on the verge of getting evicted because his housing benefits being stopped, um, and there's many issues why he might have been sanctioned. Yes. I mean, maybe he didn't turn up to a couple of meetings or um, all that type of thing. But still, a year with no money that's a long time. That's and it. We we're always trying to f- uh, support him, so we've helped him with acts as well. Yeah. Um, so we we're, we're able to help him pay some of his rent arrears, um, pay some of the gas and electric for the month, and also give him some food. Yeah. Um, so I, I met with him last week, and hopefully we're working together. And we're looking to get a couple of MPs involved in this specific Brilliant. case as well. I'm great. So what I've re- re- realised yeah. since we started, um, like working closely with people, and we've seen more people mm-hmm. come in with benefit-related um, issues, is that we we originally don't. Our job isn't to help with the benefits because no. we don't have any trained yeah. staff to help with benefits. No. Um, but we're more and more we're seeing um, we're ringing up job centres, we're ringing up CABs, and we're yeah. seeing how we can help and work with them. Because obviously, yeah. if they're not doing the job on that side, and of we're course. trying to help them as much as we can. So the role of the food bank itself then has expanded oh, quite yeah, beyond yeah, its yeah. original remit of just yeah. providing food to. When we started, <laughs> we did know that we did think that there was going to be a bit more of a you know just. More than just giving food, yeah. but it's ridiculous how, how big it is. I mean, so people out there, they need a lot of help. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, we, because it's not just, it's not just a client at the yeah. end of the day. It's an actual person. It's human beings. And yeah. when when I first started getting involved with the acts or with the food bank, um, I'd meet with the clients and you'd you'd walk away and you'd be like, wow, this is an actual person who's actually hasn't eaten for a while, has been messed about, and we're probably the ninth, tenth organisation they've yeah. been to. And like you, you feel good because you're kind of like we're able to help them. But yeah. then you realise, wait a minute, no, this isn't the end of their story. Yeah. They're probably going to go on for a couple of more months. And I mean, the good thing is, it is good that they've came to us because I feel yeah. like we've had a couple of clients who have just been at the end of the tether and yeah. no help whatsoever from anywhere that they've been to. 
um, and even that small bag of food helps them out and they're so grateful for it yeah. and then when they realise there's actually further help of some potential financial support it's not just that, yeah. that's massive yeah. 100% of the time we, we can help people but yeah. 70% of the time it's not just that's it here's your food try out we there's do so actually, much more isn't there you know, so, so much more uh, so what is it that you do here uh, I work on food bank okay and I work a few days a week on food bank and one day we could do, uh, do hospitality and tea and coffee, you know, asking the clients what would they like to drink and stuff and make toast for them if we want toast and that. And then um, today I normally do the floor, you know, talk to the clients. And then Friday I normally do the tea and coffee for the clients on the Friday. Do you all do similar jobs or do you all have different roles in the organisation? Or do they vary sort of from week to week? I mean. I, I work three days a week and I'm always in the cupboard helping pack in the cupboard. Some food and help restock on the shelves. Okay. I only work Wednesdays and I work on the floor with the clients. Wednesdays. Yeah. I work Wednesday and sometimes on Friday. Okay. Well, what what made you all sort of uh, want to start volunteering here? <clears throat> I've been waiting for Food Bank from the very beginning. Oh, right, okay, so it's started. It'll be four years in March next year. Mm. Um, it's, it's just about being there for people who are struggling. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, in our life, we've all been there. Yeah, so. You know what I mean? We've all worn the t shirt and we all know what it's like. Do you know what I mean? And because of all the cuts now, yeah. things have got worse and people are in debt and. And with me, I have compassion, and I think it's that compassion is in me mm -hmm. that drove me to want to work on food bank to try and make a difference. You know, I know I can't put a plaster on it, and make it better for the clients, but mm -hmm. you know, just to show them that we care about this. What is it that made you want to start volunteering here? It's just knowing that you're helping other people. And like it makes them happy as well as us, and then you get to hear different stories that people have, and it's just nice to know that you're giving a helping hand. Generally, do you see people coming in here looking a bit like upset, upset, uh, sad, and depressed, and yeah. when they leave, are they generally a bit more hopeful? Yeah, I mean, with some clients, I mean, with some clients, you can just get involved in the story and that, and you know, and you know, not every client, but some clients, you know, how intent to give them a hug. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've spoken to clients where they've been telling me their story and I've been in tears. And you can't help but get driven with the emotional side yeah. of it as well. Do you know what I mean? Because you really feel for what they're going yeah. through, you know, some of their stories. Okay, well, now we're joined by Paul Edwards, who's the manager of the Central Liverpool Food Bank. Thank you for joining us, Paul. It's very much Thank appreciated you. to take your time. And when did it start then? When did these sort of numbers start increasing? When did you notice? Well, it was decent. Well, December 10, we first yeah. decided we were going to get involved in food. And me, for yeah. me personally, yeah. I felt I was living a very sort of middle class, yeah. detached lifestyle, and I wanted to get back involved with people and, yeah. uh, and, and to find out again what the needs were. So I, I found myself yeah. putting my hand up and saying, I'll, I'll do this. <laughs> I'm a, I already had a full time job. So, but I thought I could do it yeah. part time. but comes we, a full time. Yeah, yeah. we fed 2,000 people in the first year, which seemed a huge amount, but then it was 5,000 oh, wow. nearly the next year, and then 10 and a half last year. It's huge increases, and isn't it? It's maybe just dipping a little bit now, but yeah. the, huge, you know, the need is still massive, massive yeah, in right. the city. Yeah, I mean, and the I'm, other food banks are just as busy. Yeah. Uh, what, what is the, uh, the sort of uh, your makeup of the of people who use the food bank? It's a real mix of people yeah. who access the food bank. Yeah. So we would get quite a lot of single men, uh, yeah. but we get families. We had some who were not UK born. Uh, we get people who are in work. Some people who are really struggling yeah. to get yeah. unemployment. But we get a huge amount of people who are finding it hard to get their benefits sorted yeah. at the moment. Almost 60% of the people really? who access our food bank, it's something to do with their benefits so issues. It's almost always a link. And then uh, something like 17% of the people who come to food bank 
are saying that they're on low income. Yeah. So that people. So they are the earning job. something, yeah. but yeah. not enough to pay the bills. You know. But that is shocking, though. The people, who, even people who are working, still yeah. can't afford to feed themselves. I think that's what's really started yeah. to hit home in the that's whole shocking. country. That people are realising yeah. you can be in work. Yeah. You can you can have your benefits, but you still it's haven't got true. enough. To feed yourself. I think Kellogg's did a survey just recently mm. through the summer holidays because they were giving cereals to families yeah, that they yeah. couldn't access school meals. So they breakfast and, club, don't they? Yeah, so yeah. They, were, they discovered that one in eight kids yeah. were not having enough food through the summer holidays. And Shelter issued a report yeah. a couple of weeks ago saying that like one in three working parents are finding it hard. Yeah. And then one in ten adults are skipping meals. That's right across. You yeah. know, these are horrendous. And we, we tend to find that the poorest people yeah. understand the need. Because the, a lot yeah. of people say to us, yeah. we've been there ourselves. Yeah. So they give yeah. out of a real generous spirit. And we found that in the city. The generosity is phenomenal. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, because you've been getting help as well from uh, companies like Tesco's, obviously, you talked about Kellogg's. Yeah, um, a lot of people say all kinds of things about Tesco's. Tesco's yeah. have been a huge help to yeah. us because they add 30% onto whatever we collect. Yeah. And, and through it, consistently, the Liverpool stores, more food has been given by the customers in those stores over the last three years than in any other store in the whole country. It's impressive. And, and in nice quite point. poor areas as well. Yeah. It, it, phenomenal. And then the 30% that Tesco's give us so far yeah. enables us to buy the food that we're short, really short of. Yeah. And we are very short. And it, if, I suppose if, if you didn't have help from Tesco's and Kellogg's, it would, it would be a struggle though, wouldn't it? To it most certainly would. Yeah. The city mayor has been very good as well. Support Joe Anderson, is it? Joe Anderson yeah. has been incredible. He's been getting different organisations together to see how they can work together. <coughs> and um, given us some funding, which has provided storage space. Oh, wow, that's good. Uh, it enabled us to hire a van for half a day a week and a driver. Yeah. Without that, we'd be really struggling. Do you think? Do you think that the, the, the more it, it, with the food banks, etc., it's, it, this is more a case of people realizing that this poverty that's always been there and that that's finally shining a spotlight more on it, or is it rising in inequality? Mm. Well, I think the last two years there has been an increase in demand yeah. for help. People yeah. crying out for help. Yeah. You know, we get people coming in very embarrassed, very ashamed, tearful. Uh, in, in a real low point in their lives yeah. because they can't feed their families and uh, you know anxiety sets in and despair and hopelessness you know? <coughs> and it is and obviously on that point as well it's not just a uh, safe place where people come to get mm. food it is also a place where people can come to talk to someone to, yeah, to and if try can and get help, help people yeah. you know but whatever issues whether it's housing or they're having drug issues or yeah all kinds of things debt you know, big one, isn't it? People yeah, need yeah. money management help. Yeah. You know, so if we can direct them to the right organisations, we will do that. Yeah. We're not experts on that. Of not. But you do what you can, can't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If people want to help and donate, uh, what's the mm. best way for them to do that? Well, they come in, into the Frontline Centre here, which yeah. is right on the junction of Lawrence Road and Wellington Road in Wavertree, <coughs> Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, can drop in donations any time of the week. As much as possible, we'll try and thank everyone. <laughs> yeah. Write or email to thank people, because we believe that's really important. So we just finished touring the food bank, meeting some of the people working there, running it, um, and it's been a bit, it's been an eye-opening experience. Uh, what did you uh, think food banks would be like before you arrived? That's be honest, I thought it was just going to be essentially a place where they just gave out food. Yeah. Um, I didn't realise there was so much more they did, you know, helping the community, helping people, you know, really in need in terms of you know, death. So that's all about yourself, what did you I think? thought there would be like a, just a warehouse with like boxes everywhere and you just go in, there'd be a table full of boxes, you get handed your box yeah. or your bags of food and then out you go. But yeah. it's a very friendly atmosphere and environment. And, uh, yeah, very welcoming. It was yeah, very welcoming. Yeah. Care. And yeah, the people there, I think that was the other thing, the people there genuinely really did care and really did see it as something very important to them and very important to the community as a whole really. I think though that the um, 
to Agri are the just, uh, increase of use of food banks, just uh, really highlights just the growing inequality in the UK. And um, yeah. And there isn't, yeah, and, there, and the, this literally is the sort of the last place for people to go, you know, when, when the benefits have failed, failed them, when any yeah. other agencies failed them. Food banks have become normalized, I think, and that's, yeah, that's, a, that's not a healthy attitude. No, no, it's, it's been an interesting one, but. Food banks are good to have, but it'd be better if uh, we didn't need them. Yeah, in a perfect world.